The Baltimore Ravens had some key players return to practice today. They also re-signed a player who was recently cut. Mike Evans tweaked an injury in practice today. The Ravens are finally getting some national wide receiver love. And Nate Wiggins and Brandon Stevens staying after practice to work on deep ball drills. All that and more in today's episode of the Flock Rundown. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can tame the untamed. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown. So the Ravens had Broderick Washington and Arthur Millette return to practice today. Brent Urban, Malik Harrison, and Deontay Hardy did not participate in practice today, but there were no other key absences. So pretty good to get Broderick Washington and Arthur Millette back. We'll see what's going on with the other guys, but no injury concerns really for the Ravens moving forward. The Ravens also re-signed Sala to the practice squad. Remember, this week he was cut and then he made it through waivers so the Ravens ended up bringing him back so welcome back Sala and staying on the injury front for a second the Bucks head coach Todd Bowles said today that Mike Evans did tweak a previous injury and that is going to keep him out of practice for a little bit but they do expect him to come back to practice later in the week so as far as we know at this point it's not anything super serious, but he did aggravate a nagging injury, and that is something to keep an eye on. We obviously play Monday night, and Mike Evans is a huge part of what the Bucks do on offense. Another piece of NFL news is Jamal Adams requested a release from the Titans, and he is now free to sign anywhere. The only reason I'm bringing this up is because he met with the Ravens in the offseason, and they obviously had some interest or at least wanted to explore the idea of bringing him on board. He doesn't like the situation in Tennessee. He wants to play for a contender. So I don't know if his release means anything for the Ravens at all, but there is a connection there. The Ravens were previously interested in the offseason, so I wanted to kind of bring it up and talk about it. I don't even know where he'd fit. He's definitely more of a physical safety, versatile linebacker, somebody that we could kind of bring into the box or send on blitzes or whatnot. I'm not sure if there's even room for Jamal Adams to play in this defense but since they met with him before I wanted to kind of bring it up get your guys thoughts on it he is released he is a free agent so he is going to sign somewhere and according to him he wants to play for a winning team so I guess the Ravens would definitely be an option since he had already visited and we are a contending team but if he's looking for a ton of playing time I don't know if this is the best fit for him, you know, to revive his career. I don't know how much playing time he's going to be able to get on the Ravens right now, but I'm open to bringing in talent if it makes sense, if they feel like they can use him in some way or provide some depth for the rest of the guys, then cool. Moving on, the Ravens are getting a lot of national love in general, especially their offense of late. But one thing that we never get national love on is our wide receivers, or at least the, you know, the Lamar to wide receiver connection. And that is what we were getting some love on today. I saw this online. The Ravens are ranked fourth. This is according to Dan Orvlosky and their little thing that they put together on Get Up. But still, it's national media and you don't hear praise like this very often. But Zay Flowers and Lamar Jackson are ranked in the top five quarterback wide receiver duos. And that's pretty crazy, man. I don't know if we've ever really experienced that in Baltimore. You know, Zay Flowers has a real chance, especially if he re-signs and we keep him for years, he has a real chance to become the greatest wide receiver in Ravens history. That's that's really not saying a ton. You know, I think right now Derek Mason, Torrey Smith kind of own all the stats there. And then we've brought in some veterans like Anquan Bolden and Steve Smith and guys like that. But we've never really drafted a guy, kept him for a long time so that he could rack up the stat sheet. And I feel like Zay Flowers could be that guy. I don't really see the Ravens getting rid of him. You know, who knows when we have to make that decision a couple years down the road. But I highly doubt Lamar Jackson is not going to want to have Zay Flowers on the team. They're pretty close. They have a strong connection and Zay's a weapon, you know. That would be a huge loss for us down the road. So however that works out, I'm not sure. But if Zay Flowers is here long term, he's going to go down on the stat sheet and just known as the greatest wide receiver to ever put on a Ravens uniform. It's kind of like Mark Andrews is about to pass Todd Heap for the most touchdowns by tight end in Ravens history. So that's pretty wild. You know, we're looking at current Ravens who are breaking the all time stats 
of former Ravens, especially on offense. But it's just really cool to see the Ravens getting a lot of love. I see a lot of Rashad Bateman love right now, and he and it's well deserved, man. Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman are winning their one on one matchups, and that's really all we can ask of them. You know, the scheme's also working. So shout out to Todd Munkin. Lamar Jackson looks better than ever. He's delivering the ball more accurately and more consistently than ever before. More importantly, he's diagnosing defenses and going through progressions at a faster rate, at a smarter rate than he ever has before so just the elevation of all of it man it's beautiful to see and we're finally getting a true multiple balanced offense that is playing at a high level in different areas you know a strong running game but also a strong passing game and it's just fun to watch and it's fun to hear the rest of the world kind of appreciate this greatness that's going on and let's just hope it continues man I don't see why it wouldn't but shout out to Zay Flowers, shout out Lamar Jackson, shout out this entire offense, this entire team. I, you know, <laughs> could go on and on, man. I'm proud to be a Ravens fan. I saw Ryan Mink just put this tweet up and it caught my eye. Nate Wiggins and Brandon Stevens working on deep ball drills with Tez Walker after practice, specifically working on getting their head around. You probably heard last night in the Ravens Wired, there was a really cool conversation between Kyle Hamilton and Nate Wiggins. Oh, it's gonna be just, you're in good position, bro. Just get your head around. Oh, I got you. Work better at get my head around. Yeah. That's it, bro. Cause you're in the hip every time. It's just it's taking so long to get there that you know you bound to damn near yeah. touch him. So like, once his eyes go up and you know it's a fade, get your eyes around. Go pick that. Really cool to hear some behind the scenes conversation like this, and awesome of Kyle to pretty much just say Nate is doing everything he should be just get the head around these are small things that you can work on this is just focus within the coverage you know and uh, I think Nate and Brandon Stevens too are going to be able to work on that and improve in that and they are in the right positions most of the time and that is the hardest part to be in it's hard it's hard to have the athleticism to stay with the receiver it's hard to be patient and read the receiver's moves and Getting your head around is something I feel like that you can add to your game and just consistently keep thinking about. Now, obviously, you don't want to turn your head around too early because you can get lost and lose track of the receiver and they make a move when you turn your head around and now you're not covering the guy anymore. So there is a balance there. And I'll echo Kyle's point. He nailed it by saying to watch the receiver. You know, when they're looking up for the ball, that's when you go look for the ball and not just stay covering them, especially with such tight coverage that Nate Wiggins had. You're way more vulnerable to draw those defensive pass interferences. And I think that one was on fourth down. Great coverage, great stop, but he didn't turn his head around. So now they're going to throw a flag. If you just had your head turned around, that's an incredible fourth down stop, turnover, offense is cooking the other way. So Nate Wiggins is right there. Brandon Stevens is right there. Marlon Humphrey's playing well. Would like to see Marcus Williams and Eddie Jackson play at a little bit of a higher level, but I do have faith in this secondary. Even going into Monday night, I'm definitely not expecting to shut the Bucks' offense down. They're going to score some points, no doubt, but I think we're going to see improvements week after week by this secondary, and by the end of the season, I'm telling you, we're not going to be talking about how bad our secondary is. It's way too talented, and a guy like Nate Wiggins is quickly on the rise. He's not going to be getting worse. So I know this is the weakness of the team at the moment, but I don't think at the end of the year we're going to have a weak secondary. I don't, I don't think that this is the weak spot of our team. And just like the offensive line turned around, I think you're going to see the secondary turn around in an even bigger way, to be honest with you, because there's a lot more talent in that secondary. There's a lot more invested in that secondary than we have on the offensive line right now. So I have faith that we will turn it around. I know it's been a bumpy start. We've played a lot of high-powered offenses with a lot of talented wide receivers, and that's about to come up again on Monday night. So is this the week that our secondary shuts a team down? Probably not. But I do expect the secondary to play better than they have. I'm not expecting a Bengals-type game on Monday night. I think that the Ravens can hold them a little bit less than that. So we'll see, man. We'll see. But I love that they're getting some extra work in after practice. Shout out to Ryan Mink for highlighting that. Now I'm going to talk about some of your questions that you had in the comments in yesterday's video. We'll start with Mr. Steel Yo Girl. 
Everybody keep your girl away from this guy. Do you think we'll fire John Harbs after this season? I want him gone regardless if we win a Super Bowl. I'm going to say no. I don't think that the Ravens get rid of Harbaugh this year at all, to be honest with you. I know a lot of the Ravens fans don't like Harbaugh and are kind of sick of some of the things that he does. He's definitely fair to criticize in certain moments like challenges and just some game management decisions. You know, I definitely am not thrilled with everything he does, but as a CEO, as a a leader of this team to keep the Ravens culture going, to make smart coordinator hires and make decisions. I think that he is the right guy for the job. I don't think it's that easy to just go grab another coach. And where do we really need to improve in? I mean, yes, defensively right now, but we have a very young defensive coordinator who is only going to get better and better and better. We saw Mike McDonald have this same exact struggle to start his tenure. So not beating up Zach or yet. It's way too early to be like, John Harbaugh made a terrible decision. Like it's, it's six games in. Mike McDonald had a terrible start start too and then the following year we're praising him and he becomes a head coach so uh, you know give Zach or a year or two before we're over here beating that decision up and I just think Harbaugh is one of the best hires in the NFL I think he's a great CEO I definitely wish we would have brought on a Jerry Rossberg or somebody to help with game management in crucial situations. I think that we can improve there for sure. So that's one weakness of Harbaugh's to highlight. I am uh, not expecting Harbaugh to go anywhere anytime soon unless he wants to hang it up. But I feel like there'll be a strong contingency plan for somebody else to take his spot whenever that does happen because he's been such a long tenured head coach that the Ravens are not just going to sporadically move on. This is going to be a very calculated decision whenever that time comes. And then we got a couple questions questions from Dennis. He said, can we go 15 and two? If not, who do we lose to? Can we go 15 and two? Absolutely. We can go 15 and two. I don't think we will. That's a crazy bold prediction. You know, some teams definitely going to catch us on the wrong day. Um, I definitely think that we could lose a division game or two where we always seem to be flat against Cleveland or Pittsburgh once a year. You know, it, it never seems that we can just run through our entire division easily, no matter how good those teams are or not. It just seems like they have our number in certain games. So I would expect a division loss or two and then a team like the Bucks Monday night or something. I'm not saying I'm predicting a Ravens loss. I'm just saying one of those fiery teams that can score a lot of points and are playing at home and have a lot of momentum, I think can catch us in the wrong moment. So I definitely think we can go 15 and two, but I'm predicting another two to three losses throughout the rest of the year. And that still leaves us in great position and winning the division most likely. So I don't think that we're going to have a terrible record. I think that we're on the right track. I'm just not expecting to go undefeated the rest of the year. That would be beautiful. I would love that. That'd be incredible. I just don't assume that because I don't like to have expectations that high and then have them busted and then I'm feeling some type of way about it. So I think we'll have a couple more losses, but to answer your question, we could go 15 and two. Dennis also asked two other questions. Will Ben Cleveland start a game this season on the O-line and is Bo Braid another Kyle Hamilton waiting to get on the field? I do not see Ben Cleveland starting a game on the offensive line unless we have a lot of injuries. I think it's pretty clear at this point that Ben's not really going to get a shot on the offensive line for whatever reason. Harbaugh said that he hasn't earned it and hasn't shown it in practice. Even when he blocked that field goal, a lot of people were like, we're just glad he found a role. And it just doesn't seem like he's in strong contention to be in any type of starting role on the offensive line. So you know, unless there's two, three injuries on the offensive line, I don't think we're seeing any Ben Cleveland. And then is Bo Braid another Kyle Hamilton in waiting? I don't think anybody's Kyle Hamilton. That guy's one of one, and he is a very high first round pick. Even before the draft, he was being mocked in the top seven picks in that draft in the first round. I know he slipped to us, but that was a mistake by the other teams. That was a very heavy offensive draft to start. And I feel like some defensive superstars fell and Kyle Hamilton's one of them. And we capitalized. Bo Braid, I don't know what he's going to be in the NFL. You know, we haven't seen him, but he's an undrafted player. So to have Kyle Hamilton expectations, there's 
no way that they're even comparable in my opinion, and they're completely different sizes. But I do love what I've seen from Bo Braid. I like what I saw in college from him. I love what I saw in the preseason from him. So I think he's going to get a chance as the years go. It's definitely somebody that the Ravens want to keep around, no doubt. But I'm not putting a Kyle Hamilton tag on him, man. That, that, that is too high of expectations for him. Let him go out there and prove himself, and then we can find some good comps of players to compare him to. But Kyle Hamilton's in a league of his own. But that's it for today, guys. Let me know what you guys are thinking on everything that we covered today. We covered a lot of different topics. And I appreciate you guys tuning in to another episode of the Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day. And I let the greatest linebacker in history, Ray Lewis, take us out. Ravens Flock. The Flock Rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. The flock rundown. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense contain the untamed.